Shout out to Squarespace for sponsoring this video. Hey guys, Spirit of the Law here. In this video, we're going to be revisiting and taking an in-depth look at the Slavs. Now there are some new civs I haven't covered yet, so it may seem odd to go back to one I have done, but this has been a long requested redo on account of the last one being 7 years old now, entering grade 2 this fall, and is pretty outdated both in format and because of various tweaks to the civ itself. According to the in-game summary, Slavs are an infantry and siege civilization, and while there may be some truth to that in the late game, I would contend that cavalry is really the safest default plan. Glancing at their ranked stats online, they're a pretty average civilization on open maps these days, while also being a little below average on closed maps like Arena. In general, we can also see their toughest matchups are actually against good knight civs, like Lithuanians, Tudans, and Franks, though as we'll see Slavs have a maybe underappreciated secret weapon against knights. Let's check them out. To start things off, their team bonus is at the basic military production buildings each add 5 to your population space, basically giving you a free house. Since most players are more focused on their own civ than their teammates, it's always nice when team bonuses help your allies without them even having to think about it, which is definitely the case for this one unless your teammates are Huns. To attach some ballpark numbers to it, houses are worth about 33 resources between the wood and builder time. As a wood bonus for a barracks and two military buildings in Feudal Age, that's already around 100 resources saved for every ally, as well of course for yourself. Throughout the game, it also has the benefit of pushing up your housing space just as you're spamming military buildings and need to raise it quickly. Another side benefit is it's also more difficult to be housed if someone is destroying your main town or your house walls. Overall, it's just a great team bonus in both 1v1 and team games, and like I said, is one of my favorites. Moving on to their civ bonuses, the first and most iconic is that Slav farmers work 10% faster, as if we needed another reminder that Eastern Europe is a major breadbasket for the world. The way this works is it actually increases the farmer's gather rate by 18% during the time they've stopped and are physically gathering, but after including all of the walking time, it ends up averaging out to around 10%. If you have doubled up farms, it's a little less than that before wheelbarrow, but for reasonably placed farms, it does about what it says throughout the game. Obviously, you still want to take your free food sources in Dark Age and won't feel it then, but over time, the faster farming is a very significant bonus. In Feudal Age, for example, with 18 farmers, it's an extra 28 to 37 food per minute after wheelbarrow, which can easily add up to several hundred food by the time you're in Castle Age. At that point, if you're booming, 5 farmers usually isn't quite enough to sustain a town center or knights from a stable, whereas for Slavs, 5 farmers placed right next to a drop-off point can comfortably sustain either one. Likewise, it means if you have 3 town centers and 2 stables making knights, you can get by on 25 farmers instead of 28, showing the advantage is actually worth multiple villagers. Even in Imperial, it means just 8 farmers per stable to spam hazards instead of 9, freeing up both some population space as well as physical space on the map. In fact, Slavs end with better late game farmers than everyone except the Poles. The point is, there's no question it's one of the strongest long term bonuses in the game in total free resources, while again involving no extra effort on your end as a player. There's a reason that back when this bonus was plus 15% instead of 10, Slavs were an incredibly popular and dominant Civ on the latter. The next Civ bonus is you get supplies for free when you hit Feudal Age. This is a replacement bonus for the fact they used to get free tracking until that was given to all civilizations for free. Now, theoretically, free supplies could help a large men-at-arms push, dropping each unit's cost by 15 food in Feudal, though I actually consider this their weakest bonus. Keep in mind, supplies cost just 75 food and gold, with a quick research time as well. It kind of plays into the infantry civ label, but practically it's not that impactful, and even with this, long swordsmen in the mid-game would be pretty unusual, as they're otherwise completely generic. I think late game is when infantry makes a lot more sense for Slavs, though this bonus does mean you don't have to worry about forgetting to pick it up during a tech switch into champions. Moving on, their next Civ bonus is that their Siege Workshop units are 15% cheaper. Slavs also have a ton of Siege options, so there's plenty of opportunities to make use of this. Discounted mangonels in Castle Age are my personal favorite, but it helps right through to adding Siege Ram, Scorpions, and Onagers in Imperial. Technically though, they give the greatest savings on their Siege Towers. 
To put things in a bit of perspective, if you have two siege workshops making mangonels, the effect of the bonus is similar to having three more villagers divided between wood and gold. This bonus combined with Slav's great late game infantry means they end with arguably one of the strongest halberdier and onager pairings in Imperial, especially if gold is getting tight. At the same time, their skirmishers aren't that great either, so having discounted siege can also be especially handy against archer civilizations. Believe it or not, that's actually all of their bonuses. It's a relatively short list, carried mostly by the flexibility of the farming rate boost. So far, Slavs actually have a lot in common with Tudans, as they share an infantry and siege leaning, but are also well set up for cavalry, thanks to a great farming bonus. As we'll see, they share a third similarity, which is a heavily armored unique unit. Speaking of which, let's turn our attention now to the Boyar. I like to think of them as a Teutonic Knight on horseback, given their high melee armor. Traditionally, they haven't been a very popular unit, but have had some incremental improvements over time to their armor and a quicker training time, which together I think make them a bit better now than their reputation. Stats-wise, they're a more heavily armored version of the knight when it comes to melee, though they attack a bit slower, so looking at the attack stat on its own is slightly misleading. Both units also have a similar cost, though with slightly more emphasis on gold for the boyar. It turns out though that once you factor in their very quick training time, they actually end up needing basically the same economic setup as two stable knights to create the same number of units from a castle. Usually there's a stigma around castle units being harder to mass, but after their sped up creation time in definitive edition, that's really not as much of a concern. Similar to knights, they also don't have any bonus damage behind the scenes, and in castle age they beat even strong knight sieves one on one and hold up better against melee counters, though camels and pikes are still cost effective responses. In most regards, you can think of them as a knight plus, with the drawback of, of course, needing a castle. One way you can think of it is you have regular knights at the stable and top tier knights from the castle that you can choose between, or even combine together. Jumping ahead to Imperial Age, their elite upgrade has a relatively high cost, especially compared to Cavalier, but the elite boyar is a significantly better unit, on the same level as almost any top tier paladin in melee. Keep in mind Slavs don't have the Paladin, so it can be a bit of an awkward decision to stick with the conventional knight line you may have been massing in Castle Age that ends at Cavalier, or making an expensive switch to give yourself the next level of unit. Despite now having as much as 11 melee armor, they're actually still cost effectively beaten by good camels and halberdiers though, while also lagging behind Paladins against Arbalesters, taking just 50 instead of 60 arrows. This is another case where after having some pierce armor added a few patches ago, they don't really deserve their reputation as being especially poor against archers. In fact, they compare quite favorably to the Slavs Cavalier and Hazar alternatives. At the same time, I don't want to oversell the unit, and lots of players just stick with the conventional stable either out of habit or momentum once you start making knights, though the Boyar is definitely a solid melee unit when you want a bit more punch. Just to emphasize again though, because I think it's very important, halberdiers and heavy camel bonus damage ignores armor. So the boyar's hard counters are basically the same as the regular knight line, despite their melee armor. Of course, you do always have to come back to the fact that you require castles to make them, though a recent change has made them significantly easier, which is their brand new tech, detonets. For 400 wood and 200 gold at a castle, the tech replaces 40% of the stone cost of future castles and towers with wood, which is generally an easier and faster resource to collect. Of course, the first castle is at full cost, as you need to build a castle to research it, and it is 600 resources up front, so it's not as crazy in early castle age as it might sound. Once researched though, spamming castles is much easier, as you can make them with just 400 stone in the bank and have a little left over, which is very satisfying. It does affect towers as well, though for Slavs, their towers max out at Guard Tower without Bracer, and they're also lacking Bombard Towers, so this is primarily for castles. For a bit of context, a typical civilization can create 5 castles with a stone around their starting town plus their free starting 200, whereas Slavs can make as many as 8 castles if they buy 100 extra stone from the market. Obviously, you'll want to set some aside for extra town centers as well, but that's still potentially 3 extra castles that can be used either defensively or aggressively. It even factors into how many resources you need to repair them as well, which depending on how much wood you have may either be a good or bad thing, but usually good. Moving on, their second unique tech is Druzhina. This allows all of your infantry, so halberdiers or champions, to deal 5 damage to enemy units around them with every attack, not including the unit they're targeting. This is especially nice because it ignores armor, and while it is very expensive and really only a post-imperial option, it gives them amazing halberdiers and champions. In fact, this tech single-handedly sends Slavs from not being an infantry sieve to arguably the best in the late game. That said, it's a difficult tech to quantify, since it does nothing in a one-on-one -on -one fight, but is obviously very impactful in large groups. 
One thing I do love about it though is that the more you're outnumbered and surrounded, the more enemy units are being impacted. So it's helping to its maximum extent exactly when you're at a numbers disadvantage, especially against enemy units with low attack. Units like Karambit Warriors and enemy Halberdiers, for example, just get absolutely wrecked by Slav Champions. So that's their unique units and techs. The Castle Discount is a really nice addition to the civilization, and between good infantry, cavalry, and siege, you have a lot of options to mix and match depending on the situation. That said, there are some pretty large gaps in their tech tree, so let's take a look at that now, starting with their largest failing, the Archers. The Archery Range is a building you typically avoid in the late game as Slavs, thanks to missing Arblaster, Hand Cannoneer, Thumbring, and Bracer. Lacking the extra range and Thumbring also means even the Cavalry Archer isn't a very appealing option, though of course you could still open with Archers or use Skirmishers as a counter. Practically speaking, I'd say it's one of my rare F grades, as they're very similar to Teutons, who got a C, but Teutons actually have hand cannoneers, putting them a clear step above. Next up for the infantry, this one's tricky. You have all the standard techs available, free supplies in the early game, and Druzhina in the late game. As I mentioned before though, they only really stand out in a post-imperial situation, which you're not guaranteed to get to. Their farming bonus does factor in here though, as infantry are pretty food intensive, and Slav infantry makes for a great combo with their strong siege, protecting each other's weaknesses. I'm gonna say it's an A- for infantry, giving respect to their late game, though acknowledging they're pretty mediocre for the first while, and Druzhina is a very expensive tech. Moving on to cavalry, this is primarily how I approach the Civ. The only major thing missing is the Paladin, which isn't exactly replaced by the Boyar, as existing knights and cavalier you have reach an early dead end. For most of the game though, their knight spam is very strong thanks to their farm bonus of course, and something I haven't really touched on is their light cavalry line is also up there with the best. While they don't have a direct bonus, considering they only cost food, the farming bonus is very impactful here. They have one of the best Hazar spams in the game, arguably even better than Poles, given their wing Hazars are missing an armor upgrade, though Magyar Hazars are pretty hard to top. Going back to their online stats, they do seem to get outcompeted by other strong cavalry civs, so it's hard to give them an A or A+, especially while also lacking Paladin, but I can comfortably give them an A-. That said, it's an A+, for the Hazar spam specifically. Next up for their siege, the only notable thing missing here is the Bombard Cannon. Remember, their siege discount doesn't apply to trebuchets, but even still, discounted siege rams and onagers are pretty great. Like I said, they're also nicely complemented by Slav infantry as well. Personally, I'm a big fan of discount bonuses in the mid game when your economy is still growing, and considering all of their options in Imperial, I'll give them an A for Siege. I still think a couple of civs like Celts and Mongols have an arguably higher ceiling, but Slavs are definitely up there. Moving on to the Navy, it's hard to point to a useful civ bonus in the early game. Faster farms doesn't really help when you're trying to focus on building fishing ships instead. Most civs have something tangential to help on water, so Slavs are a pretty underwhelming and generic sea grade. Though if we stretch, maybe faster farmers is sort of useful to free up some more villagers to chop wood. In the late game, you're also missing Bracer, Shipwright, and a couple of naval upgrades. So again, I consider them as sea on water, and not even particularly well suited for hybrid maps. Taking a quick look now at monks, despite losing a monk-related unique tech recently, this is one of their strengths. All that's missing here is heresy, probably on account of having the boyar and cheap onagers. Monks also make for a nice combo with discounted siege, so while they don't have a direct monastery bonus, I still think they're an A-. In practice, they're a useful wildcard unit, even if it's just throwing in a few to heal your expensive cavalry units. Moving on to defenses, the castle discount basically sent Slavs from a terrible to a great defensive sieve. You can see they're missing tons of university techs plus bracer, but when you have three extra castles with your starting stone, you're instantly a good defensive sieve in my eyes. If all of their castles had the discounted stone cost, it would be an easy A or A+, but the fact it takes a while to get going on top of missing bracer for a bit of final range, I think we have to drop it down to a B+. Certainly, if you like spamming castles though, Slavs are now right up your alley. Finally, let's look at their trash units, meaning units that don't cost any gold. Like I said, their halberdiers and hazars both end up being among the strongest in the game, and it's only really their skirmishers that hold them back. I think of Slavs as a top tier trash war sieve, with their farm bonus and even discounted siege contributing to that as well. I've seen stats suggesting in games lasting well over an hour that they actually end up being quite good, and even affording the odd extra onager here and there can do wonders against skirmishers especially. For this category, I'll give them an A-, held back mostly because of their underwhelming skirmishers. So that's the Slavs tech tree. It's a little surprising that with such a strong eco bonus, free early housing, and an A range grade in 5 out of 8 tech tree categories, they still end up performing just middle of the road on the ladder. 
I find it especially surprising given their great cavalry, which tends to put a lot of upward pressure on a civilization's win rate. It just seems for whatever reason, despite some strong tools, the combination just doesn't take them to the top level competitively. The most obvious explanation to me implied by their win rate over various game lengths is they're just a bit too slow to get going to compete with hyper-aggressive civilizations. Despite ending up very strong, the farming bonus in particular isn't really kicking in seriously until mid to late feudal. Now that said, one thing that doesn't take a long time to get going is building your own website on Squarespace, who have kindly sponsored this video. Using one of Squarespace's templates, you can create a website quickly without any prior knowledge of web design. Within minutes, I was able to create a professional looking website for my art studio side hustle, Spirit of the Draw, and the tools I had available were perfect for either selling physical items online or dealing with scheduling and payments for lessons. Using Squarespace's third-party extensions, you can automate lots of the tedious tasks of running a business, like scheduling, shipping, handling returns, and a Squarespace extension will even sort out the sales taxes automatically when someone buys from your site. It's easy to set up and maintain, so you can focus on blogging, creating, or entrepreneuring, and not fussing with logistics in the back end of a website. The best part is if you use my code, you get 10% off your first purchase of a website or domain. So hopefully that was a helpful look at the Slavs and gave you some ideas or inspiration to play what I think is a very fun civilization. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.